All righty, looks like we're up and running. Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I know the images are going to be mostly um, dog related, but I'm going to try and squeeze in a little bit of um, other animals as well. So don't be discouraged if you're not a dog owner. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and just apologize. I have my friend here with me today. Um, they were supposed to be in school, but stuff happens and she's not in school. So bear with me. All right. So let's see. Um, first and foremost, like always, I am not a medical professional. I'm not a vet. Um, I am not here to help uh, treat, diagnose, prevent um, any diseases or cure your pet. And um, regardless of what that may be, um, you're responsible for how you use this information. My um, suggestion is you take the information that you learn and you do it in conjunction with a holistic vet because those do exist. You just have to research and find one that fits you um, and they will be more in line with the beliefs and um, the way to help your pets um, more than a traditional vet. So there's that. Um, before I get into applications, I do want to just read through a few things to remember, you know, like um, humans, us people, there's things to kind of, you know, consider when you're using your oils. Um, so there are essential oils rich in menthol, such as peppermint, should not be used on sensitive areas of any animal, um, like the belly, the armpit, the throat, or their genital areas. Um, citrus oils are photosensitive, so just be very cautious that you are not um, applying a citrus oil and then they're going out in direct sunlight. Um, keep essential oils away from the eyes. If you, for some reason, get them in your eyes, their eyes, whoever's eyes, get a fatty oil, um, not water, because water will make it worse. Um, if your animal is pregnant or nursing, it's wise to consult your health professional of any type. Um, use oils with caution and common sense and dilute and we will get to um, what your dilution ratios should look like. Um, if your animal is being diagnosed with epileptic or has a history of high blood pressure, also consult your um, health provider using extra caution with high ketone oils such as basil, rosemary, sage, and tansy. Um, they should always be diluted or diffused with animals. And then use extra caution when using oils around animals with known allergies. Um, this is a big one because I feel like this could be like a, um, something that you would think is common sense, but I was surprised by. Uh, so the bottoms of feet might be um, a safe location to apply on a person or human, um, but are not suitable for most animals. So do not apply your oils to the bottom of their feet. Um, what else is there? Making sure you're using, hi, I'm already kind of dived in, so bear with me. Um, let's see, any other thing is if you are bathing or grooming an animal, just make sure you add one to three drops of undiluted, undiluted essential oils directly to the bath water. Um, don't, say, um, don't, just make sure you don't get it in their eyes, I swear that's going. So those are just some things to be cautious of um, when you are using essential oils with your pet. Um, so applications are going to be very different for different animals. So for dogs, the application um, will really just depend on the size. And you, um, small dogs, you would want to start with um, diffusing, while larger dogs are going to be more toler tolerable to direct oil application. Um, dogs can be used way more freely than you would with like a cat or a bird. Um, both cats and birds are a little bit more sensitive to oils. Um, cats, you want to introduce with diffusing first, um, and then they will kind of show you if they're interested, whether they're, you know, close up to the diffuser or if they're running away. And always make sure if you are diffusing that there is a way for that animal, regardless of what the animal is, um, to get out of that room in case they are just not um, vibing with that oil that you're using. Um, you cannot kill your cats with oils, so just know that. Well, Young Living Essential Oils, I guess I should say. Um, just make sure, like I said, that they have a way to get away from the oils if they just don't prefer them. Um, birds, in particular, are very sensitive to, um, like, chemicals. So you want to just make sure you're not using any chemicals around your birds, air fresheners, um, your, your household cleaners should all be like a thieves, um, just to make sure that you're protecting them. Um, and they, you're not able to actually apply 
with on their feathers. So you never want to use it topically because their feathers will get um, like matted and you can't, they won't be able to use feathers. Um, and then horses, if you're really going to go into that, is really just with petting and like massaging and same with kind of livestock. You can put it in their food, their water, or just use it um, on them topically. So those are some of your application um, things. So the next thing is dilution. So again, it's going to be very different depending on the animals that you are, um, are using them on or with. So for small animals, such as cats and small dogs or exotics, you want to apply three to five drops of dilution um, oil mixture per application. Again, this is any fatty oil, um, you know, your coconut oil, your jojoba, your olive oil, your V6, whatever it is. Um, for larger dog or larger animals like dogs and goats and pigs, um, you can do three to five drops neat. Um, and then just dilute only if they are high in phenols or phenols. And then for large animals like cattle, horses, and it says elephants, which makes me laugh so hard because I don't know anyone who has an elephant, but if you do, um, apply 10 to 15 drops neat. Um, and again, only dilute if they're high in phenols. And then this image just really shows you um, per pound what they recommend, but you just use for caution like you would. Um, okay, so we're really going to go through the starter kit first because you can use your starter kit just like you would um, with yourself or your family. So the starter kit oils are really good for pets. Um, Copaiba is really good for your um, body's natural response to irritation and supports a healthy digestion. Um, you can do the vitality in their water or their food if they will have it, or you can just put a drop on your finger and you can put it directly in their mouth if you think that they need some support or even calming because that beta carphenol, or I don't even know how to say it, beta carphenolin is very good for calming. Um, so that's a great oil <clears throat> to use for calming or just to support those um, digestions and your natural response to irritation. Um, so lavender, this is a big one. Puppies, um, rescues, like my dog was a rescue and we really had to use calming type oils for him. Um, you know, we, he, we kennel trained and you know, you don't want like the kennel to be a scary place. It needs to be a safe place. So you can start with lavender to really help them um, feel safe and soothe, to make those spaces feel safe and soothe. Um, so it's also really great for skin. Um, I like to put my little lavender in some spray bottles and kind of just spray the bedding or the whatever the mats and the kennels. And mom life, my daughter has, to, has gone poop. This is this is life. Sorry guys, give me two point five seconds. I am so sorry. Um, okay, so lavender, and also it's really great for like 4th of July. So you would maybe get those thunder shirts if you have a, you know, scared animal. Um, and then also using your lavender to kind of help in conjunction, um, you know, just make them feel secure and safe and calm. <clears throat> um, Diagize. This has been like a lifesaver for us and our animals. So we got our dog as a puppy, and as most puppies do, they get into everything. Um, and they eat things they're not supposed to eat and things come up and all of the goodness that happens. So you can um, put directly on their stomach or, I mean, you wouldn't diffuse it. I would just put it directly on their stomach or if it's vitality, again, you can have them ingest it. I just find rubbing a little bit right on the tummy has been a huge, huge lifesaver um, with these animals that get into everything. Mm. Also, if you have an animal that gets like car sick or motion sickness, because I do have animals that do that, or I've known animals that do that, this would also be a great um, oil to use for that as well. So pan away. Um, this is going to be, I think, a little bit more specific to a dog that's like a very active. Um, like I know huskies are very, very active. We used to have one. They go for long runs and they're, they need a lot of activity. So if you have a dog that gets a lot of activity or they're in like a sport, such as sledding um, or something or competitions of any sort, then they're gonna definitely um, benefit, excuse me, from Panaway. Um, also horses 
could probably really benefit from this if they're competitive horses and they're jumping and running and all of those things. Um, this would be a great oil to use for the more active um, lifestyle dogs or animals. And then um, also layering Copa Iba on top because Copa Iba is also a driver oil. So it'll help kind of get everything in. Um, okay, so you're either going to have purification or citrus fresh. They're both kind of interchangeable in my opinion. Um, you know, purification is more of a annoyance free um, an oil. Um, and then the citrus fresh is going to be more of like a freshening kind of smell. So if you need to do like a, um, like a, a refresh on your pet, even like they're smelling or you just went into like they ran a bunch or whatever, you can put some drops of either purification or citrus fresh and just kind of, um, pet their, their fur with it and just kind of give them like a little bit of a, a refresh. Um, but if you do live in an area that has a lot of, um, annoyance in the outdoors, then you can use your purification to kind of help alleviate those annoyances. I have to tell you, purification works amazing. Um, I love it. We, we live up in the mountains and I've been, I have a new puppy. Well, she's a German shepherd. She's very active. And like, I just started using Panaway on her after her, because we've been, you know, walking her and I don't know if the altitude makes her get tired. Oh, maybe her because she came from down the hill. But, um, yes, I, the, you just with the digest pan away and, um, purification, I've been using those so much on my dog because she gets car sick going up and down the hill too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Not fun. <laughs> I feel like people don't realize that your starter kit can, you, you can use for everyone, everyone, everyone can benefit. Yes. So it's really, I love to, I love to hear that because yeah, we've used every single one of these with our dog because same kind of stuff. Like it's just, yeah, it's really crazy. Um, Stress away was so lavender and stress away kind of in my opinion do the same things in terms of like calming or relaxation um, For us. I felt when my dog was alone He when he was a puppy he got very stressed out So we would diffuse stress away and I cannot even tell you like he doesn't have to be um, In a kennel anymore when we leave and he doesn't need to have any kind of like he would be just super destructive and you know freak out and so now we definitely don't have to to deal with that. I feel like he knows I'm talking about him. He's like right by my feet. Um, Stress away, I think, is my dog's favorite. Whenever I put in the diffuser, amazing. he'll go over there and just lay right by the diffuser with his head off the bed. It's amazing. I know they know. I feel like they, I mean, they totally know that that's it, that it helps. I mean, yeah, I love stress away. It's, oh, it's been a, it's been a big game changer to kind of help with those um, anxious type feelings that they could have. Um, so lemon, I actually have a funny, story about lemon, not funny. It wasn't funny at the time, but, um, lemon is known for kind of getting sticky stuff off. It's like one of the things that you can use lemon. And so my dog, I didn't realize, but on a walk, he had gotten, um, gum stuck in his paw. And then like, we didn't realize it until after it already kind of dried on his paw. And he was, but it was, I could tell something was bugging him. And I really looked and I was like, Oh my God. Cause if we tried to pull it off, his paw pad would have just come right off. So, um, I dropped a couple of drops of lemon. I let it sit and then I like was able to peel it off gently and like get it all the stickiness off of his ball without hurting him in the process. Um, and then I'll get to it later. But then, you know, we applied the animal scent ointment on top and it healed it and he didn't lick it. It didn't, I mean, the, from the smell, it doesn't smell like it would taste very well. So I think it helps them not lick it and ingest it, even though it wouldn't hurt them. Um, but anyways, Lemon's also really good for training um, with scent marking. So like I have friends that hang like a bell by the door. So when their dog is ready to go out, they ring the bell. Um, so lemon really That's helps me. with those kind of training, training um, with the scent marking. That's good to know. I never would have thought that. I got to start using that because we have potty bells for her too. I love that. Okay. I never knew this was a thing. I have to say, I didn't know this was a thing oh, until my, I was at my friend's house and her dogs were ringing the bell and I was like, what the heck is going on? But yeah. <laughs> and obviously you diffuse it and it smells really beautiful and, and happy. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, thieves. So again, same as you would use for your, your friends. And again, um, you know, you don't want to apply to animals' feet um, like you would a human. It's just not an ideal place and it's not recommended. Um, but you can pet them with thieves, um, thieves vitality, if you can get them to ingest it. It really just helps support their overall um, wellness. 
And then it says it diffuses and creates, when you diffuse it, it creates a calm and comforting environment, which I can totally see because I feel like it's got those kind of like oils that make you feel like you're getting like a hug. It's like a winter, like Christmassy kind of smelling oil um, blend. So it seems to be calming for them. Um, so getting to the animal scents oil specifically, um, so pure, clean, mend well, and infect away. So first of all and foremost, these are all already um, diluted. So there's no like guesswork, you just use them as is. Um, the three are meant to be combined in a three-part system to cleanse and refresh the skin and should be part all like used together. So you wouldn't really want to use just pure clean or mend well or infect away. You'd want, um, you'd want to use them all together. And it really just helps to support and prevent any kind of skin issues. Um, TUA promotes new levels of emotional freedom and joyful feelings. So I feel like from the conversations I've had with pet owners, um, TUA and stress away are kind of interchangeable. But, you know, as people, some work different for others. So like my mom's animals prefer TUA as where my animals prefer stress away. So you really can just try and see um, if they have some emotional issues or support that's needed, um, which one they would benefit from more. Um, Repel Aroma is an annoyance free outdoors oil. So it's like your purification, but it's already diluted and there's some other things in there, but it's really interchangeable with purification. So you can just use it on them topically um, if you're going to be outdoors and you have annoying pests out there. And then Paragize is very similar to Diagize. They're almost the exact same blend except for those three additional oils in Paragize to help specifically um, use for animal digestion and helps get rid of little compliantly like things that are in there that probably shouldn't be in there um, to get rid of them. Um, so that's the animal scents um, essential oils that you can buy specifically for animals already diluted and um, again they're pretty interchangeable with our like starter kit. There's things added to each to kind of be more specific to our pets. Um, so new, not new, but the pet shoes are I think somewhat new like in the last year or two. Um, the dog pet chews are a dental pet chew, so they're meant to support the dental um, health of your dog. And then the cat treats that we just came out with last year are a cat treat. They're not a dental treat. They're treats for um, just like rewards to treat them and give them little yummy snacks. Do you want to say here? Um, so these were interesting. I saw um, that these were kind of some additional outside of the kit oils that are really good. So neroli, if you have an animal that has bad dreams, and it's funny, you can always tell when an animal is dreaming, I feel like, or if it's bothering them because they start moving around and getting all crazy. Um, orange is good for older dogs, tired dogs, or grieving dogs, which I think is so amazing. You never would think like a citrus oil would be um, so powerful with emotions. Um, which actually leads me to peace and calming one or two. They're going to both kind of do the same thing for dogs that need to relax. I had a family member that had two dogs that were siblings that one passed and the other one, you know, they're heartbroken. You can tell that they know something's wrong, but she diffuses peace and calming like on the daily to support the animal's um, emotional state. And it is like the pup, the dog like acts like a puppy again. Like if she wasn't really um, showing any kind of grieving, like that was being supported with that peace and calming. Um, and it also on the flip side, if you're introducing another dog to the equation or another cat or another whatever, um, peace and calming would be really good for that as well. Um, Valor one or two are great for courage, for training, competitive events, um, and active dogs and empowering. Um, healer chrism is a good, again, act, well, I feel like it's good for everything, but active dogs, teething dogs, joint support, um, those kind of things. Frankincense, your Swiss army knife, um, that is in your kit and you can use it for, um, like rescue pets that have some, again, some emotional issues, um, or fearful dogs. And then again, skin support, um, margem is good for sensitive dogs, emotional dogs, highly strung breeds. And this made me laugh. Girl, crazy dogs. <laughs> Compliance. Girl, crazy dogs. Um, and then deep relief for active dogs. Again, you can use your Panaway or deep relief, whatever it's easier. Deep relief might be um, more ideal just because it's already diluted and you can just use it probably straight on your pet um, without having to worry about getting a fatty oil. 
this is my like favorite part. So supplements. I feel like I've just recently, within the last like year, discovered supplements um, for myself and then realizing like, duh, you can use it for your animals. Um, so I get this magazine. Well, actually, my mom gets it and I steal it from her. That's called Animal Wellness. And it is amazing because um, it really talks about holistic ways to support your animals. So there was a section that I found um, in this one article was talking about, you know, supplements to replace, I don't know if I can say that. Um, let me just, uh, just more natural ways of supporting your animal for things. So what I thought was really interesting was when you're talking about allergies and animals, um, something that can really help with allergies is high ox antioxidants and high omegas. So two of the things that we have that would be really beneficial in a situation like that would be your Ninja Red um, because it's huge antioxidants. Um, I mean, it's just huge overall health support. But if you have, you know, a dog that suffers from any kind of allergies, then they're going to need more antioxidants in their diet. So a Ninja Red would be a great um, way to do that. I, my dog personally, like, won't drink his water if I put it in there. I think he thinks I'm trying, I don't know what he thinks I'm doing. But um, I recently had someone telling me if you just put it in, like, a dropper or a syringe and just open the mouth, put it in, and you'll be good to go. And just do, you know, that um, every day. Sorry, my kid is, like, torturing my dog with a balloon right now. I'm just watching. Anyways. Um, so the other thing I thought, oh, and Omega. So then you have your Omega Gis, and you can, again, um, just, you know, put it in their mouth and then kind of pet the throat to like get them to um, swallow it because um, it's also going to be really good for like the uh, inflammatory part of having all your allergies. I'm doing something. Um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting is um, any dogs that have arthritis are going to su be supported from things like MSM and glu glutose some salmon, salmon, I can't, I don't know how to say it. It's G-L-U-C-O-S-A-M-I-N-E. Thank you. Um, and the two, glucosamine, but I still struggle with it myself. Thank you. Um, so the things that we have that are offered with those things, so sulfur times huge with MSM. Um, so you can definitely add that to their diets. Um, and then I think that the, something that's missing from here is, you know, BLM. BLM and Agilese would be huge for kind of that arthritis support. I don't even know if I can say that, but um, support with the joints, um, the inflammation. It has MSM and the BLM. That's not like a rhyme. BLM has MSM um, as well. So those supplements will really benefit some animals that have those kind of issues. Um, so if you want somewhere to start when you're talking about supplements, I think Ninja Red would be the first thing. And then diving into some of those specifics, if either it's joint issues or if you have a larger dog, I think, you know, larger dogs are going to be known to have joint issues later down the road. So just start with more preventative um, care, if you will, with the Agilese and the BLM and Sulfurzyme. So, and the Sulfurzyme you get, and if you've never seen it, it's a huge, huge bottle. It'll last you a while and it's super affordable. Um, and I think that was, it. Do you, Gosh, like do you know if they ever came back with the sulfurzyme powder? So no. So as far as I heard, they're getting rid of it and it, okay. it might still be available until it's sold out. Um, but the capsules are like a veggie capsule. So you can just open yeah. it up and, okay. and dump it in. Or okay. if your dog will allow you to like have force them to kind of swallow something, mm -hmm. you probably could do that as well. Mm. But yeah. Kind of it. Let me turn this off so I can like see what I'm doing here. Um, stop. 